بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Our lecture today is about the anatomy of the larynx The larynx which is also called the voice box Position The position of the larynx The larynx lies between the lower end of the pharynx at the vertebral level C3 above and the upper part of the trachea at vertebral level C6 below. The functions of the larynx include, first of all, it is the air, it consists of the air passage. Second, it acts as a sphincter to prevent food entering the air passage. And three, it is an organ of phonation. Skeleton of the larynx. The cartilaginous skeleton is composed of single cartilages and pair cartilages. The single cartilages include the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage, the epiglottis, and the paired cartilage include the arytenoid, the corniculate, and the cuneiform cartilage. Well, see, this is the thyroid cartilage, and this is the cricoid cartilage, and this is the epiglottis. Of course, this is a sagittal view of the larynx. Showing these, the end pair cartilage, the big lotus, the cricoid cartilage, and the thyroid cartilage. The paired cartilage include the arytenoid cartilage, which is a pyramidal shaped cartilage called arytenoid cartilage, and above it at the apex is the corniculate cartilage. This is a small piece of cartilage. And also we have the cuneiform cartilage on this fold, which is called ari epiglottic fold. This is very small cartilage here, cuneiform cartilage. This cuneiform, corniculate, and arytenoid cartilage are paired cartilage. They say present on the right and on the left. Now we'll talk about each cartilage and we'll give you some short notes about each cartilage. The thyroid cartilage which is the largest cartilage and consists of two laminae or plates united in the midline or the middle line in front to form a projection eminence which is called Adam apple. Above this projection there is a deep V-shaped thyroid notch. The posterior border of each lamina is projected upward as a superior horn attached by ligament to the greater horn of the hyoid bone. The posterior border also extends inferiorly as an inferior horn, which articulates at the side of cricoid cartilage. The outer surface of the lamina is marked by oblique line along which are attached the thyrohyoid, sternothyroid, and inferior constrictor muscle of the pharynx. So this picture show you the thyroid cartilage. This is the thyroid cartilage and its parts. It's composed of the lamina, which are left and right. This is the left lamina, and this is the right lamina between these two lamina, we have this a prominence, which is called laryngeal prominence or Adam's apple. And this is the superior thyroid notch. Also, we have a small notch here, which is called inferior thyroid notch. And posteriorly, a thyroid cartilage extends upward in the form of horn also, of course, right and left horn, superior horn, and this horn attached with a ligament 
to the hyoid bone. Here is very clear. This is the superior horn, and this ligament attached to the greater horn of the hyoid bone. This is, of course, a posterior view of the larynx. Also, the thyroid cartilage extends, the posterior border extends inferiorly to form the inferior horn. And this inferior horn articulates or attached to the lateral aspect of the cricoid cartilage. This is the cricoid cartilage. A lateral aspect of it attached the inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage. And here we have this line on the lamina of the thyroid cartilage. This line is called oblique line. To this line attach three muscle, hyothyroid, sternothyroid, and the inferior constrictor muscle of the pharynx. The second cartilage is the cricoid cartilage. The cricoid cartilage has a synetric ring appearance. Synet ring is just like khatim. This is called synet ring. Synet ring appearance and attached below to the upper cartilaginous ring of the trachea. It is narrow at the front and sides. This is the front of the cricoid. Cartilage is narrow in the front and also on both sides also is narrow but is wide posteriorly. You see how it is wide posteriorly where it gives attachment to the arytenoid cartilage. If you go back to the previous picture, you show this is the uh, cricoid cartilage, posterior aspect, posterior aspect of the cricoid cartilage, and here both arytenoid cartilage. This is the left and this is the right arytenoid cartilage on the upper border of the cricoid cartilage. So posteriorly is wide and its upper border attach the two arytenoid cartilage. The inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage articulates with its lateral aspect. Okay, you see, this is the inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage articulates with the lateral aspects of the cricoid cartilage. So two cartilages attached to this cricoid cartilage. The upper border, we have the arytenoid, two arytenoid, and when it's lateral, attached to it is the inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage. The third cartilage is the epiglottis. Epiglottis ويطلق عليه باللغة العربية لسان المزمار. It is a thin leaf-like structure made of elastic cartilage. It is projected upward behind the tongue and the body of the hyoid bone. You see, it is projected upward behind the tongue. This is the tongue and the hyoid bone. To which it attaches to the hyoid bone by hyoepiclotic hyo ligament. Its lower end is attached to the posterior surface of the thyroid cartilage. This is the thyroid cartilage, and its lower end attached to the posterior surface of the thyroid cartilage by a ligament which is called thyroepiclotic ligament below the thyroid notch. Here is the thyroid notch. Below the thyroid notch, this ligament, thyroepiclotic ligament, present here, give attachment to the epiglottis. The arytenoid cartilage. This is the arytenoid cartilage. You see, this is the cricoid cartilage, and this is the right arytenoid cartilage, and this is the left 
Aritinite cartilage. They are pyramidal in shape. Haramiyet as shekel. Each articulates at its base, at its base, with the cricoid cartilage. The lateral projection of the base forms a muscular process. So this is the muscular process. The lateral projection of the base is called the muscular process. And the anterior projection, this one, the anterior projection, forms the vocal process. So this is the vocal process, and this is the muscular process. The vocal process, it gives attachment to the vocal, to the vocal ligament. The apex of each retinoid cartilage projects upwards and slightly backwards. This is the apex. This is the apex of the retinoid. Projects upwards and slightly backwards. So these are the two retinoid small cartilages and their parts. This is the muscular process. This is the vocal process, and this is the apex. The corniculate and cuneiform cartilages. Corniculate cartilage, they are small elastic cartilages located at the apices, apices of the retinoid cartilage. Here you see in this picture, this is very small corniculate cartilage present at the apex of the retinoid cartilage, very small one. The cuneiform cartilage are small elastic cartilages located in the aryepiglottic fold. Where? In the aryepiglottic fold. This is the epiglottis. This is the arytenoid cartilage. And this fold between the arytenoid and the epiglottis is called aryepiglottic fold. On this fold, the cuneiform cartilage present in this fold. Of course, this is also an a sagittal view or sagittal section of the larynx. This is the trachea. This is the cricoid cartilage. And this is the epiglottis. This is the hyoid bone. And this is the uh, cartilage we mentioned. The cuneiform, the corniculate on the apex, and this is of the retinoid, and this is the retinoid cartilage. Now we talk about the membranes and ligaments of the larynx. The cartilages, unpaired and paired cartilages, are attached together and form the structure of the larynx. And these cartilages attached to each other, articulate with each other, by a number of membranes and ligaments. These membranes and ligaments of the larynx actually are many. And this picture shows you some of these membranes and ligaments. Of course, this is the hyoid bone. And this is the thyroid cartilage. And this is the cricoid cartilage. Between these structures of these pieces of uh, cartilage and hyoid bone, these, the, uh, their, uh, the, the membranes and ligaments present. We have the thyrohyoid membrane, and we have the median thyrohyoid ligament, and we have the median cricothyroid ligament, and we have the cricothyroid ligament, or sometimes it's called the cricothyroid membrane. I will talk about these membranes, each one separately. 
First of all, we have the thyrohyoid membrane. From its name, this membrane is between the thyroid cartilage, this is thyroid cartilage, and the hyoid bone. So this membrane is called thyrohyoid membrane. It is a fibroelastic sheet joining the inferior surface of the hyoid bone to the superior aspect of the thyroid cartilage. It is thickened laterally and in the midline to form the lateral and median thyroarytenoid ligaments respectively. Of course, in this picture not shown because uh, we should uh, these these ligaments can be seen in the posterior view of the larynx. The second ligament is the cricothyroid ligament. It joins the superior border of the cricoid cartilage to the inferior border of thyroid cartilage. It joins the superior border of the cricoid cartilage to the inferior border of the thyroid cartilage. This is the cricothyroid ligament. Also is called cricothyroid membrane. The third ligament is the vocal ligaments. These are thick bands of elastic fibers running from the vocal processes of the arytenoid cartilage forward to converge as a V-shaped on the internal angle of the thyroid cartilage. They are covered by a mucous membrane to form vocal folds or what's called true vocal folds or vocal cords. You see this picture? This is the process which is called vocal process of the arytenoid. This is the arytenoid cartilage. This is the cricoid cartilage. Uh, this process of the arytenoid is called vocal process. So the vocal ligaments, the vocal ligaments, uh, this uh, the thick bands of elastic fibers, you see this one, elastic fibers, running from the vocal process, this is the vocal process of the arytenoid cartilage, forward, forward to converge as a V-shaped, a V-shaped with the vocal ligament of the other side. on the internal ankle of the thyroid cartilage. And this ligament covered by mucous membrane to form the vocal force or true vocal force. Of course, these vocal ligaments, they vibrate, producing sound when air rushed up from the lungs. Fourth, the ventricular ligaments or vestibular ligaments. Ventricular ligaments, these are two bands of fibers that run from the lateral borders of the arytenoid cartilage. They run from the lateral borders of the arytenoid cartilage to the internal ankle of the thyroid lamina. These ligaments run above the vocal folds and they are covered by a mucous membrane to form the ventricular folds or false vocal folds. See, this is the uh, and uh, this is the vestibular ligament or ventricular ligament sometimes called or also is called false vocal cords. And the function of this uh, faults, they help prevent any object from going into the clotus. The clotus is this area between the two, the space between the two 
vocal folds is called the glottis المنطقة المزبارية so it, this vestibular fold is above the vocal ligaments or the vocal folds and they help prevent any object from going into the glottis and to protect the vocal folds it has no any relation with phonation the phonation and the sounds arise by vibration of this true vocal folds this has no rule of uh, phonation the vestibular ligaments or ventricular ligaments has no role in phonation the other ligament is median cricothyroid ligament it is a median ligament running from the anterior superior aspect of the cricoid cartilage to the anterior inferior border of the thyroid cartilage you see from here to here so it is a median ligament running from the anterior superior aspect of the cricoid cartilage to the anterior inferior border of the thyroid cartilage this is called the median cricothyroid ligament six the ary epiglottic ligaments ary epiglottic ligaments ary belong to the arytenoid cartilage epiglottic belong to the epiglottic uh, glottis uh, so these pass these ligaments pass upward from the apices of the arytenoid cartilage to superior lateral borders of the epiglottis so this is the apices of the arytenoid cartilage. This is the arytenoid cartilage. This is the arytenoid cartilage. This is the vocal process. And this is the muscular process. And this is the apex of the arytenoid. From the apex of the arytenoid, this ligament pass upward along the lateral side or the lateral borders of the glottis. From the apex, along the lateral border of the apex of the glottis, and it's called the ary epiglottic ligament. Seventh, the quadrangular membrane. Quadrangular membrane. This is the quadrangular membrane. See, this is the quadrangular membrane. The area between the ary epiglottic ligament this is the ary epiglottic ary epiglottic ligament above and ventricular ligament below this is ventricular ligament below is filled with a thin fibroelastic sheet so this membrane is consists of a thin fibroelastic sheet and this is called quadrangular ligament because of this shape. Marabba al-shakil. So quadrangular membrane is a thin fibroelastic sheet present between the ary epiglottic fold or ligament and the ventricular ligament. This is the quadrangular membrane. Lastly, we have the cricothyroid membrane, or it's called conus elasticus. Conus elasticus, cricothyroid membrane. It is an elastic tissue. It is also an elastic tissue. This membrane is elastic tissue attached below to the cricoid cartilage. This is the cricoid cartilage. Attached below to the cricoid cartilage, attached in front to the thyroid cartilage in front to the thyroid cartilage and at the back to the arytenoid cartilages this is the arytenoid cartilage so this membrane cricothyroid membrane or conus elasticus is an elastic tissue 
present attached below to the cricoid cartilage and in front to the thyroid cartilage and at the back to the arytenoid cartilage. Okay, now we talk about the laryngeal inlet or what's called etidus. Laryngeal inlet, Mithal al -hunjara. The laryngeal inlet allows air to pass from the pharynx above to the lumen of the larynx below. And this inlet is formed anteriorly by the curved superior border of the epiglottis. This is the superior border of the epiglottis. This is the epiglottis. This is, this is the root or the back, the root of the tongue, posterior part of the tongue. And this is the epiglottis. So, it is formed anteriorly. This is the anterior part of the laryngeal inlet. It is formed anteriorly by the curved superior border, curved superior border of the epiglottis, laterally, this is laterally on both sides, by early epiglottic folds. This is, this is early epiglottic folds. This is the uh, arytenoid uh, bone here, a cartilage, sorry. And this is from the early epiglottic folds on both sides from the lateral borders of the laryngeal inlet and posteriorly by a fold of mucous membrane of arytenoid cartilage. The arytenoid cartilage as paired cartilage, one on the left and one on the right, between or uh, between these and covered these two cartilage is a mucous membrane. This is from the posterior boundary or posterior border of the laryngeal inlet. Also, we have the notch here, which is called interarytenoid notch. Depression, small depression notch between the two uh, arytenoid cartilages. The lumen of the larynx. The lumen extends from the inlet above to the lumen of the trachea below. Two sets of folds, which are covered by a mucous membrane are projected from the lateral walls of the larynx to the lumen and these are the ventricular folds which are the superior set and below it we have the vocal folds. The two sets of folds divide the lumen of the larynx into three parts. The first part is the vestibule. The vestibule is the portion of the lumen above the ventricular folds. It is wide above and constricted below. The second part is the ventricle, which is a small mid portion between the ventricular folds and the vocal folds. The ventricle extends laterally and from it rises a blind pouch directed upward for about one centimeter known as laryngeal saccule. Third, the infraclotic cavity is a portion of the lumen inferior to the vocal folds. Now this picture show you, this is the posterior view of the larynx showing the lumen of the larynx, the lumen from the inlet to the starting to the, to the, to the trachea below. And this lumen, this lumen is divided into three parts by these two set of folds. This is the upper folds, and this is the lower folds. The upper folds, as we said, 
is called the uh, false course false false uh, false vocal cord and the lower set which is true vocal cords so these folds divide the lumen of the larynx into three parts the vestibule which is above the first set of folds the best, the, uh, this area is called the vestibule and this area between the true cord and the false cord is called the ventricle. This ventricle shows lateral extension and upwards blind pouch here for one centimeter laterally is called the laryngeal saccule. This is the laryngeal saccule on both sides. Below the vocal cord, here, we have the sub-epiclotic area. So, the vestibule, the ventricle, and the sub area. These are three parts of the lumen of the uh, larynx. The clotus is this one. The clotus is this opening between the true vocal cord. The true vocal cord, this opening is called the clotus. And of course, this is the epiclotus. Folk and the clotus. The clotus is a term applied to both vocal folds. So, I will repeat this important uh, slide. The two sets of folds divide the lumen into three parts. The first part is called the vestibule and is the portion of the lumen above the ventricular folds and is wide above and constricted below. The second part is the ventricle, which is a small mid portion between the ventricular folds and the vocal folds. The ventricle extends laterally and from, and from it rises a blind pouch directed upward for about one centimeter known as laryngeal saccule. And the third part of the laryngeal lumen is the infraclotic cavity, which is a portion of the lumen inferior to the vocal folds. Now we talk about the muscles of the larynx. The muscles of the larynx can be divided into two groups, the extrinsic muscles and the intrinsic muscles. The extrinsic muscles, we have also another two groups, the muscles which depress the larynx and the muscles which elevate the larynx. The muscles which depress the larynx are the infrahyoid muscles and the muscles which elevate the larynx are the suprahyoid muscles. And actually, you know all these muscles, we talk about these, the supra and infra hyoid muscles. We talk about these muscles in the previous lectures. There are many muscles in the supra hyoid region and infra hyoid regions. So the supra hyoid muscles elevate the larynx and the infra hyoid muscle depress the larynx. The intrinsic muscles, these originate from the larynx and insert into the larynx. Originate, originate from the larynx and insert into the larynx. There are eight pairs of intrinsic muscles. The first muscle we talk about it is the cricothyroid muscle from its name cricothyroid 
We always tell you that when muscles composed of two words, cricothyroid, crico means origin, and thyroid is the insertion. This muscle arises from the anterior aspect of the cricoid cartilage and inserted into the posterior inferior border of the thyroid cartilage. This muscle stretches the vocal cords or the vocal folds. The second muscle is the transverse arytenoid muscle. It arises from the muscular process and lateral aspects of the arytenoid cartilage passes to the opposite arytenoid cartilage. So it is transverse from one arytenoid to the other arytenoid. From the muscular and lateral aspect of one arytenoid to the muscular and lateral aspect of the opposite arytenoid muscle uh, cartilage. This muscle, when contracts, it approximates it approximates the right and left cartilage. So contraction of the transverse arytenoid muscles, it will approximate the right and left cartilage, left arytenoid cartilage. So this picture shows you the cricothyroid muscle. This is the cricothyroid muscle from the cricoid cartilage to the thyroid cartilage. The third muscle is <clears throat> posterior cricoarytenoid. Posterior cricoarytenoid. It arises from the posterior aspect of cricoid laminae and inserts into the muscular process of arytenoid cartilage. This muscle, when it is contract, it will abduct to, to bite the vocal folds. Abduction means to bite. When this muscle, posterior cricoretinoid muscle, contracts, it will abduct the vocal folds. To bite ma bain al hablain al shab al al saltiyain. Tazdad fathas al fusha li glottis. It will be opened. The fourth muscle is the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle. It arises from the lateral aspects of the cricoid cartilage and inserts into the muscular process of the arytenoid cartilage. And this muscle abducts the vocal folds. This is just the action of the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle. So the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle and the lateral cricoarytenoid muscles, these two muscles, when contracts, it will abduct the vocal folds. To bad ma bain al hablain al sotiyain. The fifth muscle is the ari epiglottic muscle. Ari epiglottic muscle. Ari belong to the arytenoid cartilage. Epiglottic belongs to the epiglottis. So, ary epiglottic muscle, it arises from the muscular process of the arytenoids cartilage and passes upward and medially to cross the midline to insert in the apex of the opposite arytenoid cartilage. And this part of the muscle is known as oblique arytenoid muscle. You see in this diagram, this is the ary epiglottic muscle. Here is the arytenoid cartilage. It arises from the arytenoid cartilage and it passes to the midline and across the midline to other side. One from the left to the right and the right which goes to the Lift. They cross each other here. So this part is called the oblique retinoid muscle. All this muscle is called ary epiglottic muscle. Ary epiglottic muscle. Here the retinoid cartilage. It pass toward the midline and cross the midline. This is the midline. 
to the lateral border of the clots here. So this part, this part, which which pass obliquely, is called oblique arytenoid muscle, and all the muscle is called aryepiglottic muscle. So it arises from the muscular process of the arytenoid cartilage and passes upward and medially to cross the midline to insert in the apex of the opposite arytenoid cartilage in the apex of the uh, opposite arytenoid cartilage and here pass from here muscular process start from the muscular process here not 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 visualize the muscular process of the arytenoid of this side it pass obliquely to the apex of the uh, arytenoid cartilage of the other side of the muscular to the apex from the muscular of one side to the apex of the other Side. Opposite arytenoid cartilage. This part of the muscle is known as oblique arytenoid muscle. So the oblique arytenoid muscle is between this muscle that pass obliquely is between the muscular process of the arytenoid cartilage on one side to the apex of the arytenoid process uh, cartilage of the other side. So this part of the muscle is called obligated muscle. Then the muscle fibers continues upward to insert into the lateral aspect of the epiglottis. You see? This continue, this muscle continue on the lateral aspect of the epiglottis. This side is the right, goes to the left border of the epiglottis. And the left area epiglottis pass to the, from the left side to insert in the right side of the epiglottis. It's clear? And this part of the muscle is called the oblique arytenoid muscle. All the muscle is called aryepiglottic. But this part, from the muscular process of the arytenoid here to the apex of the arytenoid in the other side, this part is called the oblique arytenoid. Okay. Contraction of aryepiglottic muscle will cause, will closes the vestibule. Will closes the vestibule. When this muscle contract, the epiglottis will close, will close the, the, the upper part of the lumen of the larynx, which is called the vestibule. So it's actually very important uh, in closure of the vestibule. The other muscle is thyroarytenoid muscle. Thyroarytenoid muscle. It lies just above the lateral cricothyroid muscle. It arises from the internal aspect of the thyroid lamina and inserts into the lateral border of arytenoid cartilage. The muscle closes the vestibule. The other muscle is thyroepiglottic muscle. The fibers run from the thyroid cartilage to the epiglottis. So from the thyroid cartilage to the epiglottis and help to close the vestibule. So we have three muscles that can help us in the closure of the vestibule. That say protect when this uh, when it close the vestibule, uh, it prevent 
any uh, foreign body or during deglutition any piece of uh, food or something like this to 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 enter the the clotus by contraction of these muscles and the closure of the vestibule these muscles thyroepiglottic muscles the thyroretinoid muscle and the aryepiglottic muscles these three muscles help or when they contracts they close the vestibule the other muscle or the last intrinsic muscle is the vocalis muscle the lower medial fibers of the thyroretinoid muscle passes as a band of muscle fibers to insert on the vocal process of the arytenoid cartilage the muscle fibers run below and lateral to the vocal ligament this muscle when contracts which shortens the vocal ligaments to shorten the vocal ligaments of course when the vocal ligaments become short it means that there is narrowing of the clotus there's approximation of the vocal cord now we talk about the motor nerve supply of the larynx or the nerve supply of the larynx we divide it into motor nerve supply and sensory nerve supply now we talk about motor nerve supply all the intrinsic muscles all the eight intrinsic muscles of the larynx are supplied by the laryngeal branch of the vagus nerve which is the cranial nerve number 10 through the recurrent laryngeal nerve except except the cricothyroid muscle which is supplied through the external laryngeal nerve of course these two nerves are branches of the vagus nerve let's say the larynx is supplied by vagus nerve and the branches that supply the larynx are the uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve supply motor supply to all intrinsic muscles of the larynx except one muscle which is a cricothyroid muscle and this muscle is supplied cricothyroid muscle is supplied through the external laryngeal nerve so we have two motor nerve supply to the larynx we have the recurrent laryngeal nerve and we have the external laryngeal nerve external laryngeal nerve and recurrent laryngeal nerves are very important nerves during thyroid surgery when we do thyroidectomy or subtotal thyroidectomy or total thyroidectomy we take care not to injure these nerves because if any injury to these nerves happen this means that there is dysfunctioning of the vocal cord and the patient may develop many complications both relatively once we remove the tube at the end of operation the sensory nerve supply of the larynx include also the vagus nerve so the vagus nerve is sensory nerve to the larynx through two laryngeal branches which are the internal laryngeal branch which is sensory from the mucous membrane above the vocal folds and the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is sensory from mucous membrane below the vocal folds This picture show you the nerve supply of the larynx. We have here the superior laryngeal nerve, which is a branch of the vagus nerve. 
the superior laryngeal nerve divides into an internal branch and external branch. The superior laryngeal nerve, which is a branch of vagus, divides into internal laryngeal nerve and external laryngeal nerve. The internal laryngeal nerve pass here with uh, to, to, to take sensory supply above the vocal from the area above the vocal cords and the external laryngeal nerve is a motor supply to the cricothyroid muscle. The recurrent laryngeal nerve give motor supply to all intrinsic muscles of the larynx except the cricothyroid and also take sensation from the human of the larynx below the vocal cord. So the vagus nerve is sensory nerve to the larynx through two laryngeal branches. The internal laryngeal branch is sensory from the mucous membrane above the vocal cords and the recurrent laryngeal nerve is sensory from mucous membrane below the vocal cord. Lastly, we will talk about the blood supply of the larynx. The blood supply of the larynx have the arteries and veins. The arteries that supply the larynx are two main arteries. Number one is the superior thyroid artery, which gives superior laryngeal artery, which accompanies the internal laryngeal nerve through the thyrohyoid membrane. And the second artery is the inferior thyroid artery, which gives the inferior laryngeal artery, which accompanies the recurrent laryngeal nerve. The veins, all laryngeal veins, drain to the superior thyroid veins. This picture show you the arterial supply of the larynx. We have the this is the superior thyroid artery, which is the first branch of external carotid artery. This is the common carotid artery. This is the external common the external carotid artery, and this is the internal carotid artery. And this is the subclavian artery. So the first branch of external carotid artery is the superior thyroid artery. This superior thyroid artery will give the superior laryngeal artery or superior laryngeal branch which pass with the internal laryngeal nerve through the thyrohyoid membrane supplying the upper part of the larynx uh, here. And another artery that supplies the larynx is a branch or inferior laryngeal artery, which is a branch of the inferior thyroid artery. And the inferior thyroid artery is a branch of thyrocervical trunk, which is a branch of the second part of the subclavian artery. So the subclavian artery will give you thyrocervical trunk. From this trunk, we will have the inferior thyroid artery and from the inferior thyroid artery we have the inferior laryngeal artery supplying the lower part of the larynx. Thank you for listening and if any questions about the structure you can ask on the classroom inshallah. Thank you.